Tonight, we show you how to build the perfect 5AK collection. A big bearded man joins us, and Chris still hates that an AK isn't an AR. This is exactly why I hate AKs. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. Part of the issue that people have with AKs is... Communism. No. Right? Yes, but different point that I'm trying to make. The, the, the problem they have is the sheer variety of AKs that exist. Even take someone like me. I'm loosely an AK guy, and even I get confused by all the different designations. So today, we are going to look at the five essential boxes in terms of types of AKs that you should check when building your AK collection. like the gang's all here. Okay, everyone, welcome to the show today. Uh, we are talking about basically the five AKs you would want if you were gonna kind of boil it down to what are the five essential AKs that you would wanna have in a collection. Now, I'll tell you this, this, is, this video is largely about, I'm gonna call it like the philosophy of the choices more so than models. There will be discussion of models. That said, there is some degree of bias in the models, as I will introduce the guy with the rifle dynamic shirt on <laughs> in just a moment. That's me! <laughs> so so there's a healthy amount of bias here. Uh, I've, I own rifle dynamics guns, so it's like, you know, I, hey, I'm, I'm on the team. I, you know, the, mm. obviously like your guys' stuff. But um, I'm just saying, hey, the philosophy of, you know, hey, the kind of do-it-all gun and all this kind of stuff is largely going to be what we talk about. So before we get into it, um, Austin, why don't you introduce yourself to America and foreign viewers? You know, we have about, about like 20% of our viewers who are overseas. So you're talking to the whole freaking globe right now. Well, I know one language, so. Hi, everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the shop manager at Rifle Dynamics. My name is Austin. Um, I came out here today to bring some of, most of these are my personal choices. There is a little bit of bias, of course, towards the stuff I help build. But, but of course. Of course, we got some other stuff sprinkled in there too. Sure. Sure, um, and I, I will note this because I can already feel your your comments. Um, the 1911 Cynic is not being paid for this video. It's not even sponsored by Rifle Dynamics. We happen to be in Vegas right now, and we invited you guys to come out because we wanted to do a cool AK video. So there you go. That said, big thanks to the sponsor of today's video in a lot of our videos. The belts. Yeah. All the belts. Seguero. I, I EDC a multicam belt. I'm mm -hmm. a, a true tactical asshole, but I embrace it because the belt's very, very comfy. Mine's multicam black, so. Yeah. If you like mobility in an EDC belt, which is what I prefer personally, and I mm -hmm. you do as well, yep. um, the light inner Velcro belt would be the route. If you like something a little more stiff, apologies for making that awkward, but if you want a stiffer option, you can go with the emissary belt. And if you want to get your battle on, Get the light inner belt that's Velcro, battle wagon stacks on top of it, you can go to battle. And then you're ready to party. Yep. Um, we've got a couple videos linked below on uh, actual reviews that we did on their stuff before they sponsored the channel. You can check that out. Code's 1911 Syndicate, saves you 10% off. Really appreciate their support. On with the video. Gun number one, this was, um, as we were talking leading into this video, we thought, okay, you know, 
Really, if you can have one gun, you're going to want the gun that can kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Okay, pick number one is what we are going to label the 506 Mark II. It's going to be a 145, basically the do-all. Anything yep. you want to do, this probably can do it for you. Yep, right on. And I have not shot this yet, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run a mag and uh, just see what I learned from running the first mag on camera here. Very much like a 5.56 AK. Yeah. I was gonna say it looks very, very soft. Very soft, very controllable. Obviously full length guns, which on a little light fast round like that makes some sense, but super controllable. And that's with an LPVO, with a dot, run the piss out of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. quick, quick. Yeah, you run like take a uh, EOTech and magnifier, throw it on that, mm -hmm. drill it. Money. Drill it, yeah, because there's a little bit of inherent magnification on that, even when it's on, ah, it's one, one and a quarter, that's why. Yeah. I'm it's like, that is, not, that is a terrible 1X. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's not a 1X. Okay, cool. All right, back to the truck. Okay, so what do we got? So right here in the hands of my beautiful model, we <laughs> have our 506 Mark II. Now, what that's going to mean is, so 500 series is going to be 545. So this is 545 rifle, 14.5 um, pin and welded to 16. And that 6 is going to mean that we have this 1913 rear trunnion back here. Awesome. And the reason for that, and especially on a multi-purpose platform is the idea that you can put any stock option out there pretty much to your heart's content. You can change anything. Um, this has also got our partnership with Occam Defense Solutions of the Mark II handguard. Mm -hmm. And this is set up so that you can mount an LPVO, anything along those lines, optics closer to your face without having to run a heavy mm -hmm. side rail and still be able to remove your top cover and service the weapon if needed. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the basic platform that can do everything. It's got our tunable gas block, so you can tune it to run suppressed or unsuppressed. We set them up so that you can run both from the box, but you can also tune it further from there. Other than that, this is basically just a pleasant shooting gun. Now I know 545 is a little bit unobtainium right now. Um, it's obtainable, so, but you just gotta have some pockets. Yeah, it is expensive. Yeah. Um, so this is available in other calibers as well. We'll do 7.62 and 5.56. Mm -hmm. But this being 545 is a very capable round, especially around this barrel length. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So it does pretty well. Yeah, you know, in 14.5, I, I, I mean, Chris has long been just, you know, the the side, the length of his arms, you know, he prefers full length guns. Yeah. So for you, that would be a do it all yep. length mm -hmm. for you. you and know? sounds like caliber also. Yeah, I mean, 5.45 essentially and 5.56, I mean, are very closely related, correct? In, in terms of ballistics and everything? Yeah, um, 5.45 is definitely them taking hint from what we did with 5.56. It's a very velocity dependent cartridge, it's very long, mm -hmm. very small diameter. So it, it's really for soft tissue damage, stuff like that. So it's a performer and it's a very fast round as well. Yeah. And it's very light, so you can carry a ton of it. Yeah, yeah very fun to shoot. Yes. Well, and a gun that link, you know, again, from the sort of, aside from the model, if we look at like the philosophy side of it, you go, okay, you've got a length where you don't have any travel restrictions. Right. Yeah. Versus the NFA item where, hey, if you're not a FFL or something, hey, you know, there's some considerations there in terms of state lines, all that kind of crap. Um, but I mean, the modularity in terms of handguard being able to attach, uh, you know, lights, lasers, optics, all that kind of stuff. You, you know, this is a modern AK build. I mean, yeah. with the with pick rail, you know, on the rear trend and everything. You, I mean, look, you can make all your cool guy modern stuff here. Yeah. And that too, with with a suppressor, five four five is really night vision friendly too. Hmm. So I mean, just in terms of like flash. Yeah. yeah. Suppressed and especially in a full length gun, it retains a lot of the flash and a lot of that. And I mean, you've got all this real estate here to mount whatever you want. Yeah. Um, as well as I mean, this hold zero. It doesn't move, and this is pretty much the closest to a free float system that you can get on an AK. Yeah, very, huh. very cool. No, it's a good, solid do-it-all pick. Okay, gun number two. Um, I think it'd be fair to say that there's a lot of, for some dudes, there's a lot of resistance into getting into AKs, purely based on they don't want to get another caliber. And another thing that they got to keep track of. Yeah. Solution. So, to combat that, we have 5.56 five, five, entering the game. Pick number two. 
So this is set up. I, I heard that you really, really don't like AKs. So I'm trying to accommodate <laughs> that a little bit. Um, I'm also partial to 556. Five, this is going to be our 556604, five, five, um, which is going to be an 115, so a little bit shorter. It's something that we're finally bringing back to the market. It hasn't been around for a little while, but coming back, and here it is. Cool. Yeah. Dang. Let's throw some rounds. 11 Absolutely. and a half, 556. Five, we yeah. figured you were the right one to shoot this. 556, five, appeal to your AR ness. Very fitting, right? Right. Recall is too heavy on other stuff for you. <laughs> That's it, dude. I don't even know how to load these, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it's rocking. Find the lip up front. Yep. There it is. There it is. There it is. Nope. Take you down, yeah. There we go. Shoots. Very nice, man. That appeals to me for sure. Well, it's in a caliber that's less, um, Sort of daunting if you're not into it. Yeah. Which I think for a lot of AR dudes, that is a solution. It's like, dude, just start with a 5.56 AK. Yeah. And run steel case stuff and have a blast. Yeah. 11.5. Right? Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. No, that's cool. This is going to be our 604 1913. Um, and Sixes designate 5.56, correct? Correct. You see that? Yeah. Nailed He's it. learning. Nailed it. Yeah. yeah. Good work. Um, so this is going to be our 5.56 platform. That 604 is going to be an 11 and a half inch barrel. Mm, and we've it. got a dead air brake on here, or I'm sorry, forward control designs, A2 flash hider. There you go. Um, set up with a chemo set up for a dead air Sandman S. Um, and then this is gonna be a little bit different than most of the standard 604s. This has the 1913 trunnion as well. Um, this is an option that you can add on, but standard, they come with the standard tang from a normal AKM and then RM, RDM four stock adapter. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you with a very simple AK question, mm -hmm. but it's one of those that again, for people that don't speak AK, and I, to a degree, I even let myself in that, but like, what is a trunnion? So, there is a front and rear trunnion, and the easiest to think of is the front trunnion. For those of you familiar with ARs, the front trunnion is kind of like your barrel extension. It's the head-spaced component, so that stays there. That follows because those are the two structural parts mm -hmm. in the platform. So there's your front trunnion here held in by these rivets on the side. Um, there's some of those on both sides. And then your rear trunnion back here, which is where your stock attachment point is going to be. Um, and that's going to be for stamped guns, and there's a myriad of rear trunnion options, but like this is our 1913. You have what I refer to the standard AKM rear tang, which is what you'd see with most fixed stock stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You have side folders on the 100 series. You have under folders on a lot of Yugo stuff. Um, it's basically just the rear block that holds the rear end of the gun together. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, there's yeah. things that, hey, we just kind of assume people know, and you go, well, no, I guess not, I, not everyone really knows this. I, I speak this language very well, so feel free to stop me whenever I yeah. spout off. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that either, so it's a fair question. No, like, yeah, again, no, not it's... being an AK guy, like earlier when you're like, oh, it has this and this and this trunnion and this, and I'm like, oh yeah, trunnion, uh-huh, no, no clue. Yeah, so, right. yeah. Thank magic you. words. There you go. <laughs> Right. Um, so, any uh, between the the sort of do it all five four five build that we were showing in this, um, any big distinguishing fact? Obviously, length and, and caliber. But in terms of is handguard same setup or? So, this is going to be a little bit more traditional, to an extent. Um, this is going to have our SLR Rifle Works handguard on here. The collaboration we did with them. Um, this does remove your handguard hanger, but that way there's not something that's going to be liquid hot magma on your hand. Handguard hand hanger. My bad. So, on a standard AKM, which we can get into this, there's a little metal piece right about here that hangs onto the barrel. Uh -huh. And that's what'll hold your handguard in place. Okay. And that's what holds wood handguards, polymer handguards, any of the standard traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see it in some, some guns where they have a full rail like this, like the Midwest or Zeneco or whatever, they retain that. The issue with that is that's a point to get really, really hot, yeah. really, really fast. Sure. So yes, this handguard's still gonna heat up over time, but that turns to magma in within 15 rounds. Right. And so you're holding and you feel comfortable and then find it. Torched. And yeah. Now you're torched. Um, so it's got that handguard as well as, it's not a needed component for the platform to work. So a lot of manufacturers kind of keep it on there so that you have some modularity, but it's by no means necessary. Mm -hmm. This gains modularity in use over swapping of parts. Yeah. So, I mean, you can still swap other stuff on there. Most platforms don't rely on the handguard hanger. They just accommodate it. So removing it 
is a plus, at least in my opinion. Sure. And that's why we're here. Um, this is also, it's a modernization to the extent we're maintaining rear sight tower. So we still have that fixed platform and we still have a combo front sight gas block. Mm -hmm. This is our tunable gas block. Mm -hmm. Once again, but all of our guns have a tunable gas block. And oh, that's when did that start? Because that wasn't always the case, I don't think. I uh, No, that started probably, you're going to have to forgive me here. I don't know. Three, two years? Three no, years? it's been a little bit longer than that. Okay. Probably five, six years. Okay. Um, cause we, d we did start with the combo gas blocks, the, uh, the venom tactical blocks. Okay. That's where we started. And that was just a combo block to bring weight to more rearward, make the gun more pointable, right. easier to maneuver, right. stuff like that. Then it started to be, Hey, I have an AK. I want to throw a suppressor on it, but I don't want to throw some Russian crap on there. So I want it to be livable and not sending brass in a low orbit and gassing out my face and all this stuff. So we put a set screw in the block yeah. and made it a tunable system so that one, yes, AKs are gas sensitive, but you can set them up to run suppressed or unsuppressed. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's a very, very simple system here because it's just a screw. Yeah. You can take an Allen key and change it whenever. Unlike uh, an adjustable piston. It, Where you have to take everything apart. Take yeah. that apart, yeah. Yeah, and then there's more moving parts inter introduced there. Sure. And so one eighth Allen key, correct? Yeah, one eighth, set it in there and change it. And I mean, if you're tuning at home, basically, if you're shooting suppressed and you want it to still be able to run unsuppressed, you're probably looking for a six to eight foot ejection pattern. Okay. And then, or I'm sorry, unsuppressed, six to eight foot ejection pattern, yeah. suppressed, eight to 10. Right, add so some back pressure. Yeah, it's going to add some. Um, and I mean, the sky's the limit. If you want to throw a different can on there that's super, super high back pressure, you're not going to be able to maintain usability unsuppressed without adjusting it, but you can definitely tune the system down to handle that. Yeah. Um, you can also tune it for subsonics if that's your idea because you know, can five five six you know i mean in other platforms okay yeah <laughs> yeah but it's capable sure uh you know and again sort of philosophy standpoint you go hey look a modern you know you can throw all your modern stuff on it 11 and a half five five six still capable you know a couple hundred yards at least probably yeah. you know probably more than a couple hundred but um you know then good cqb length you're just like that, that for me, if I, I'll just tell you of everything that's coming in the video, that way, if I was picking a gun here to be mm -hmm. my do everything, that would be the gun here today that I'd say, yeah, it's my do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, because we just featured the do it all, but it's like, and that checks more of the NATO guy box. Yeah. But it's like that for me would actually be my pick. Yeah. You know, I dig that gun. Very, very cool gun. Okay. On to the next. Mm -hmm. If you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, hell yeah, we definitely appreciate that. Um, the 1911 Syndicate is primarily a real estate business, although 2023 has not been kind <laughs> to the real estate market. So we would love your support any way you can give it. Um, Patreon is a great way that you can do that. We've got that link below. You get some behind the scenes content. Um, Access to the premier classes we host, like with Mike Pannone. We did that last some year. Some limited edition drops, like watches, I will tell knives. you, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but probably Probably most of the gentleman's EDC kit pre-sold on Patreon. Okay, yep. so if you want the true hack on how to do some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, Patreon is the answer for that. So check that out. Again, real estate really helps us out a lot. So do that as well. On with the show. Gun number three, we're going more of a PDW direction here. Yeah, somewhat of a modernization on the crink idea. So this is gonna be our quick hatch with the free float handguard partnered with Occam Defense Solutions. And then this one's in 762. This is gonna be the ideal 762 holds its ballistics and this short barrel length being nine inches. So, I mean, if you need to do anything close quarters, this is gonna be the hardest hitter. Yeah. And if you don't wanna pay the dollar on 300 blackout, enter this and we'll talk huh. about why that is the case coming up. But, all right, we're purposely not running a can on this because I want the violence in it. Oh, that thumps. Mm -hmm. now, that fucker thumps. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, it's a short gun with a big fat round. Like, oh yeah, yeah that gun will get it done. I mean, the steel just quivers when it gets hit. <laughs> it's just oh, God. And that's steel. Yeah. And it's terrified right now. Holy shit. Imagine a bad guy inside of a house and sees this shit coming at him. Yeah, you don't need a flashbang. You just poke it through the door, fire off a couple of rounds, then engage. Yeah, one round of this, you're definitely concussed. That is for sure. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah? I mean, it's badass, but it's violent. Oh, shit. 
Like, yeah. just angry at the world. Yeah. <laughs> just pissed off. You want whatever jump? intruder. You want to do the yeah, no, send it. Let's go. That thing's ejecting pretty hard, too. So, would you t turn the gas down on that if that was your gun? Probably. Um, this is actually our owner, Mark, his personal gun. So, he's got it set up how, how he, he wants it. Um, but, I mean, that's the idea of the tunable gas block sure. is you can turn it down at any point. Yeah. Just an eighth inch Allen key and crank it down. So, I mean, we set them up from the factory with tunability for it's set up to run both suppressed and unsuppressed. Yeah. So, you should have a fairly decent ejection pattern with both. Yeah. But once you get the rifle or pistol at home, you can then turn it down even further if you wanted to sacrifice possibly reliability for comfort sure. and then kind of dial it into that happy medium. Yeah, or if you're gonna run full-time suppress, cool, tune it for full-time suppress down. or yeah. you know, whatever you wanna do. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. I like the aggression of it. Yeah, So that and that burnt bronze finish is classy. Nasty. Nasty. Wow. All right, back to the truck. Cool. This is gonna be chambered in 7.62 by 39, mm -hmm. um, which is a really, really good round for shorter platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at, this is a nine inch gun, even at nine inches versus a 16 inch gun, you're only losing about 20% velocity. Crazy, hmm. um, crazy. And I mean, it, it's close to like 300 blackout performance. Yeah, and, and that's what I think a lot of, um, you know, again, dudes from the AR world don't necessarily get it. You know, 7.62 by 39 and 300 blackout are, it's like, they ain't that different. Mm -mm. I mean, at least they're in the same conversation of accomplishing the same shit. Right, yeah. and then I don't think I've ever had them because I've probably just never paid for them. But it's like you know, you can run that with subs. Yes. Um, so Hornady is coming out with their new subsonic rounds, and they're really, really good rounds. And the quick catch is very, very good at handling them. Um, that's one thing that falls apart with the crank is once we get into it, there's no dwell time in the system. Mm. So with our tunable block, we have it. The port is probably about here. Wow. versus a crank, which is basically right at the muzzle. So you have a lot more dwell time, probably about two inches. Yeah. And, and that goes, I mean, look, two inches is, goes a long way in life. It does the it. job. Yeah. May not be the best, but it works. Um, so, I mean, you maintain your tunability. Yeah. And you don't have to run a can for it to be reliable. And because of that dwell time in the short system, this is actually really, really good with subs. Yeah, I've never, I've, I'm actually excited to, show, hey, Hornady, if you guys ever see this, I'd love to shoot some of your subs. I would love it, you know? Um, so, you know, hey, let's be friends. That's all I'm saying. Um, and we need an ammo sponsor. Also just saying that, you know, so no pressure, but hey, if you want to call us, send us a bunch of ammo, that's totally cool. No pressure though, it's on you. Um, so yeah, I mean, hey, if, you know, if you're going, I'm getting two AKs and that's it. I, I probably wouldn't go as far as to go like a straight up PDW, but if you go, hey, we're gonna do like five AK collection, you go, yeah have a super shorty, you know, essentially it's like your sub gun on steroids kind of thing. Yeah. Um, much in the way that, you know, 300 blackout is like a sub gun on steroids. You're like, yeah, this is kind of checking that, yeah. that similar box. And I mean, along those same lines, if 7.62 isn't your cup of tea, you can also get it in 5.45 or 5.56 now as well. 7.62 yeah. performs really well. I was gonna say, yeah, that's the biggest difference. If you wanna keep ammo commonality again, 5.56 works. Yeah, So true. I mean, true. pick your poison. Yeah. yeah. Many options. Yes. Okay, so at this point, in my eyes, we've checked the three critical boxes, right? Mm -hmm. We have our do-it-all, we've got like our NATO solution, we've got our PDW. We also, if you think about what we've done here, everyone, we've given you a full-length gun, we've given you kind of a midi, and we've given you that super shorty. So we've checked our, we could end the list that, hey, here's the three essential AKs. We're gonna take it to five to have a little bit of fun. Because number four, we're going, everyone should have a beater in their collection. Yeah, because this is your favorite, right? Yeah, I think we all love the AKM. <laughs> this is the the AK that made me not like AKs. Yeah. When we, my first time shooting one was a full auto. Mm -hmm. And like after <laughs> the whole mag, I was like, I will never own one of those. I so mean, that, full that's, auto, it's pretty harsh. <laughs> it's, that's kind of the shtick though. I mean, it's gonna yeah. beat the shit out of you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Blood, sweat, and tears, and that's all just shooting a couple rounds. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the AKM is the quintessential AK. This is what really it took off from. This is the most prolific, most produced weapon ever. Um, I mean, the gun is on country's flags. It's, it's, you gotta have at least Not one. ours, not, not my country, not today. Okay. 
<laughs> Stars and stripes. Yeah. And an AR. <laughs> and an AR. And an AR. Yeah, let's put some ARs up there. Yeah. But in other countries. Yeah this, yeah. this is a thing. I have shot this gun before. So, first, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Second, this has to be here. It's the most prolific weapon in the world. And I mean, that gun's on country's flags. It cannot be in the list. Yeah. Let me ask you just a basic question. Um, what's the difference in an AKM and an AK-47? Because I feel like people, you know, again, in AK That's language, my, you're like, yeah, I don't know. what's the difference? So, this is where it gets fun. So initially it started in life with the AK-47, which that's gonna be the AK-47 Type 1, originally adopted in 1948 by the Soviet Army. So it's really the first foyer of the Russians into a thinner stamped receiver. And it had a, it's, it's a little bit different than everything else. So it's still a stamped receiver with riveted trunnions and all that stuff. The things are set up a little bit differently. The front trunnion is a lot larger, or as in longer. They kind of ran into some issues with the stamped receivers themselves. They had too high a reject rate. So then they went to milled guns or milled receivers. That's where you're going to see most people associate an AK-47 with a milled platform. That's your Arsenal Sam 7s or basically built in the guise of Type 2s and Type 3s. Mm -hmm. Very few differences in a Type 2 and Type 3. Um, just some minor changes where they move the handguard hanger or, or not the handguard hanger, I'm sorry, but the sling loop from the gas block to the handguard hanger. Small changes, they change the stock a little bit. Um, that's also an AK-47's where you'll see more often than not is underfolders. That's when that was really prevalent. Mm. Then in 1958, they finally got their shit together when it comes to stamping and were able to do it reliably. And that's when we get the AKM. So okay. it's just, that's when manufacturing got to a point that they could produce it and they made them buy the shitload. Yeah, so much history. Good God, it's, it's a lot. Okay, well, if you've never shot a... Uh... Have fun with that, Jake. It's a, uh, it's a hard. Just well, the AK guy can't even. Do this it. is a shotgun, correct? It, it, uh, it's the beater that we keep around to remind people why we do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I don't know if that gun's as nice as you think. Hand him that. Okay, maybe God, it is. Damn it! Stupid ass, stupid. Gun. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, you're fucked. No, okay. it's in. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not. not in. Oh, do you want help? <laughs> keep, keep going, you'll make it happy. <laughs> I can't get it out. It's stuck. You were shaking your ass for some reason when you What's did that. that? <laughs> and it fully well, got caught on shaking camera. Shaking the whole gun, shaking the tiny body. It's all kinds of fucked now. <laughs> hey, shut the fuck up. I can already hear what you're going to say. Shut your mouth, okay? <laughs> I know you had it wrong, but magazine release means release. Yes, I tried that. It was stuck and I loosened it for you before I handed it over. Oh, like that was so easy to do. I had to force it, but it's an AK. Don't be a bitch. You gotta force oh. it in sometimes. <laughs> Damn. Man, the guest talking shit. I love it, dude. That's how you get fired. Keep it up. That's no, how you get keep fired it up. From You're gonna get a raise. Oh. I'm here. <sighs> this is gonna be so unpleasant. Have fun. This is so unpleasant. Oh God! This you see all the nice padding on the back of it. Uh huh. Steel. It's great. It's just it's so. That's nice. why I'm built the way I am. I have natural padding. Oh my God! It's horrible. I forgot how bad it so is. So bad. I mean, that's why I don't like AKs because my first time running one was full auto. Yeah, and I mean Jesus. it's right. Get a, a really good cheek weld. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like shoulder firing this thing. Oh. And that's why you hate AKs right there. This is exactly why I hate AKs. Spent brass in a low orbit. <laughs> it's just yeah. so harsh. It's but, so rude. like you guys said, even not being an AK guy, this has to be on the list. Something like this. It has to be. Is it fun? No, it's not. Back to the truck. How many rounds do you think are on this damn gun? So this is one of your shop guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this, this guy's been around for a while. This is a very, very early Wasser. The round count is... Yes. Unknown. Yeah. It, All it's, the rounds? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, everything's kind of... Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's just... hanging on there. Um, this is one of those guns that we keep around. One is a testament to how... The platform. Yeah. 
I mean, this is one thing about the AK. As Chris had said, a lot of people's first experience is something like this. Mm -hmm. And the AK is a very forgiving platform when it comes to building it wrong. Oh, right, right, so right. if you really, really screw some stuff up in the build process, it's still going to work. And that's where you end up with things like this. It's overgassed. It's going to beat the crap out of you. It's going to run, and it will run until the end of time, yep. but it's not the most pleasant experience. Yeah. There are some models out there that are going to be better than the others. This isn't specifically you need this gun. Just you should have an AKM in your collection. You should have something a little bit more purist friendly. And AKM, you know, maybe, uh, you know, baseline level of, of education for folks. Like, so if someone says, yeah, I want to get an AKM. Cool. Like, what do you, you know, if you're in the U.S., you're like, hey, I want an AKM, you know, something like this. Is it a specific origin of country? Is it a specific manufacturer? Like, what qualifies within the AKM category that people can get? So, AKM is very, very vague, honestly. Mm -hmm. It did start, of course, as the Russian model. 1958 is when they finally figured out stamping, and that's where AKM come from, comes from. It's AK modernized, basically. Um, there are many different countries that have their own version of the AKM. As an example, this Wasser is a Romanian gun. Um, is Hungary, that what Wasser uh, designates as Romanian? Pretty much. They were Romanian imports okay. by century. Yeah. Um, it was just the model name that they chose at the time. Yeah. Um, basically, import gun coming out of the Cougar factory, probably. Um, that's what most of your AKMs in country are going to be, is probably Romanian builds. Uh, there are Russian kits out there, and Russian, Romanian, Bulgarian AKMs. I mean, for the most part, it's something along this guise. This style gas block, this style front sight base, and you're going to have an AKM. Yep. Even Yugo M70 series. Um, I was going to say, I thought Wasters were Yugo originally. No. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, well, possibly. Century may have imported everything under yeah. that guise and just called it a Wasser. I, At yeah. least modern Wassers are all Romanian guns. Hmm. The older stuff, that's where it really gets into, especially the imports, it really gets into... Who knows? Stuff just got names. Okay. <laughs> they but, and that's names what's so stuff. crazy, and I think that's... I think that's part of some people's resistance getting into the AK world, is they go, I'm just confused. Yeah. It all has different yeah. names, mm -hmm. and it's like, if you're not AK fluent in the language, the AK community is fantastic at ostracizing itself and making you feel like an idiot because you don't know what a wasser is. You're mm -hmm. like, why the yeah. fuck would I know what a wasser is, yeah. dude? Can you please be nice and educate me for a second? <laughs> you the, know? the biggest detriment to the AK community is the AK community. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, and it's... Sometimes it can be good. Sometimes it can be bad. It's, hey, I bought this gun. Oh, you bought the wrong gun. And it's like, I didn't know. Maybe. Didn't know any better. Yeah. It's like um, the guy that buys his first pistol and he winds up with a 40 cal XD. And we're like, fucking idiot. And you're like, he's like, I don't know, dude. Like, like, better, I was like, doing my best. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't trying to buy a piece of shit. It just happens that way. I mean, even my first foyer was a gun that many in the community would view as a hand grenade and that was prior to me learning everything that i now know and so it it happens and yeah. it's there's always been this stigma that ak's are 300 dollars guns and not today they're not back in the day they were coming in by the truckload i mean romy g kits were literally built guns that came that left the factory got cut up put in a box and shipped here and then built so, I mean, they were coming in by the dozen for cheap. And it's actually a very, very in-depth platform to build. Mm -hmm. If you're building it from the ground up, forging your own trunnions, forging your own bolts and bolt carriers, it's a very expensive gun to make. There's a plethora of them purely because most of them were built under a communist state where cost didn't matter. And they just built them as many as they could get out. So, it's, very it's cool. an in-depth platform. Yeah. Not fun to shoot, but cool history. And that one isn't, no. <laughs> it's not a great time. <laughs> okay, on to the big finale. Okay, so with, we've got your do-it-all. We've got your NATO. We've got your PDW, for those you want to kick doors in and just, you know, send it during the apocalypse. you got your beater, if you just want to piss everyone off. Which means, now it's time to have fun. So this uh, is legit your first rounds ever on a crink. Well, I did shoot a mag earlier for the thumbnail, um, but I'll acknowledge that. But beyond that, today, yes, is my is my first round. Um, now, this uh, does shoot fast, fast. Semi-auto. It shoots very fast 
semi-auto. Um, now we're on YouTube and we would like to, to stay on it. So what we're gonna do, if you guys want the really fast uh, semi-auto stuff, uh, go over to the Instagram page and we'll have a couple clips up there for you there. So we'll shoot it semi now and then and then faster semi for, for cool. the IG world, yep. All right? <clears throat> Now, compared to that AKM immediately, you're just like, oh yeah, here we go. I mean, it looks, sounds, and everything way smoother. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah? It's lovely. Yeah. Set a couple on there. Yeah. Uh, all the way down on the safety. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. Lovely. That is a treat. Yeah, that's a treat. That is what I want an AK to feel like. Right That there. is cool. That's the deal. Yep, I like that gun a lot. Yeah. Huh. This Can't for me it. is the, this is the pick. Like this is a true bucketless gun for me. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be a crank. Um, this is the flex piece. This is, <laughs> this is what holds a lot, a lot of clout. And I mean this with a Bakelite and you're set. Mm. Um, again, more AK things. Bakelite is a special kind of magazine made in the early production of the 74s. Um, it's a weird fiberglass crap. Yeah. Red fiberglass stuff. Yeah, orange, okay. Oh, is it orange? Yeah, oh. there are also some purple ones out there too. Oh, oh no cool. shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. And then you're East Germany and you just paint them all black. Huh. Well. Hey, I take any big lights anyone wants to send me. That's yeah, fine. Yes. Um, but, so we get into the crank. So, crank is a made up term. Um, crank, crank off, however you want to look at it. This started life as an AKS 74U. And where most of this provenance comes from is the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. These were a very, very big status symbol over there because of the fact that they were only carried by helicopter pilots and tank crews. So if you had your hands on one, that meant you took out one of the two. And that was a big deal. Still to this day, they're a big deal. And because it became popular over there, of course it becomes popular over here. Um, if you ask anyone who actually served in the Soviet army at the time, they refer to this thing as Shushka. This is little bitch. It's a, <laughs> it's a five, four, five gun with a eight inch barrel. Right. Again, we touched earlier on how five, four, five is a very velocity dependent round. Yeah. So you have an eight inch barrel with a velocity dependent round and you have it keyholing at 15 feet. That's huh. so crazy. The effective range used to be like 60 yards. It's crazy. Things have gotten better, like especially US built guns or arsenal guns, anything along those lines. They're built with a better twist rate, mm -hmm. but back then they weren't. It was just whatever they had. As well as when it comes to reliability, if you're in a helicopter crash and then you have to pull out your PDW and things aren't perfect and you have no dwell time because your gas port is right here. So, I mean, really none. Yeah, your there's, gas port's like, here and your muzzle's nothing. about here. There's a reason there's a booster on here. Uh, this isn't a traditional booster. This is a four-piece flash hider. This yeah. is Bulgarian. Yeah. Um, they originally had the Bell booster, and okay. that really was for reliability, hmm. just to add a little bit more back pressure and keep the gun running. So, it's you're in a shit scenario, and you got to get out of your helicopter because it's on fire, and now you have no stopping power. They did not do very well. It's, a, you know, in much the way, except these were good, but it was like, you know, um, if you go back to like Black Hawk Down, right? Um, Bird goes down and the MP5 was their gun in, yeah. in the choppers, right? Because it was like, hey, it was this PDW style weapon. You're never going to get a lot of range. It's not the most deadly thing in the world, but it's super compact and you can have it in compact spaces like yeah. that. And this is like kind of the Eastern Bloc solution to Th it. This is that answer. And I mean, it's, they work just fine. It's, it's really, you know, how stigmas start in militaries. I mean, the M16 for the longest time was a piece of crap and we're still running them how longer? Right. Or how, for how much longer? Um, so, I mean, yes, it's a fine gun. They're fantastic. They're, it's 545 is so soft shooting. Yeah, and is. this in fast semi-auto is really fun. Um, nice. But I mean, they're, they're a big clout piece and that's what they're for. So can you, um, you know, for me as someone who, uh, again, really does have this in, in my bucket list of guns, like, how attainable is it to, to, to do it? I mean, obviously it's parts kits involved. I mean, like what, you know, what's it take? So obviously not full auto, but you know, a it, it depends semi. on how pure you want to go. Um, because there are pretty close examples made by Bulgarian available as arsenals. Um, sometimes you can get like a Sam 7k, which is a milled gun. Um, 
or you can get, I, I don't remember exactly which model it is, but you can get it in 762, 545. The, the issue really is kit availability. The parts are hard to find and there are a few different patterns of cranks. Because hmm. uh, again, this is- Rabbit a, hole. It, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, like there are Yugo examples which look like cranks, but they have bulge trunnions. So this section is larger, but it looks like a crank. And so, I mean, it, it's, it depends on how pure you want to go because the, the only country that really produced them in any real number in this setup was Russia and Bulgaria in some extent. So it, it's kit availability is really the killer. And I mean, it, it's... It's not going to get it easier either. It, no. A, a, a good Russian Izvesh kit is more expensive than, say, one of our quick hatches. It's crazy. Huh. So, I mean, you're looking in the neighborhood of four to 5,000 sometimes. <laughs> before you build the damn gun out. It, yeah, Jeez. and that, that's just the kit. That's not counting whatever parts you have to replace, a receiver, which I, luckily this is a standard 74M receiver. You can use pretty much anything, but it's it's a pain. And but that's the end result. Them, that's yeah, what makes pretty it worth awesome. it. Well, that's a, like you said, it's a, it's a flex piece, you know? So, I mean, today's my first one shooting them and I've, you know, shot a lot of cool guns over here. Yeah. I shot a crank before today. Like, yeah, that 100% in the bucket list gun for me. I don't care if it's effective, if it works. I don't give a shit. I just need it in my life. Yeah. And Would I mean, you consider this a barbecue gun? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because it's a barbecue gun is essentially a flex piece. Who cares about the practicality of it? It is about showing some wild shit to people and them going, damn, you got that? Like, that's that right there, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That checks the box. Incredibly nice to shoot. But we have one more barbecue gun for you and just for shits and giggles as as the kids say um one more bucket list gun rpk of any type um this one being an rpk 74m so came out uh, early 90s alongside the ak 74m um, but an rpk of any type it's just a vibe long barreled anything higher weight less recoil it's nice i've never shot one Let's try. And I'm gonna, but again, my friends, the gun shoots fast, okay? Faster than I'm comfortable with showing on, on YouTube. So you're gonna probably wanna head over to the Instagram page and check that out. These are really, really fun guns in 7.62 or 5.45, or if you can find the Magic Unattainable 5.56 variant. Oh, wow. It exists. Huh. No oh, shit. Not here though. <laughs> um, it's, they're really, really nice guns. So we have a longer barrel, of course. Like tw 20 inch barrel? Like... I think it's 20, 20.1 20 if I remember correctly. Cool. Um, off the top of my head. But it's, so th this one's gonna be in 545 and this is gonna be one of the later iterations. So this came out alongside the AK-74M in uh, 91. So this is their idea of a squad automatic weapon, kind of like a saw. Basically, but smaller. Yeah. Something yeah. that can feed from the same magazines as yeah. your mainline troops, but be able to handle more sustained fire. Saws can run from mags too. Yeah, that too. Yeah. But it's it, it, fun, that's funny not... enough. It's, it's it, it reminds me of the HKM twenty seven. Yeah, you know, that idea. Yeah, um, great they, example. They yeah. started that way back when in sixty one with the original RPK. Okay, um, and that that's where we really fall down another history rabbit hole because if you look at the AK series in general. It started as the AK Type 1 was originally considered a submachine gunner PDW. The Soviet Army was adopting 762 by 39 as the mainline cartridge overall. The submachine gun was going to be the AK, the main battle rifle was going to be the SKS, and then the RPD was going to be their light machine gun. It's a belt fed, crew served weapon. Okay. Um, RPD, crap. SKS is, it's okay, but the AK is just better. Then comes 1958 and they get the AKM. That's where they really figure everything out. And now the AK has proved how good it can be. Mm -hmm. It replaces the SKS. It replaces the Type 1, the AK-47. And then a few years later, they go back to Kalishnikov, the designer of the original AK, and say, hey, the RPD is not working out too great can you make us something that will work better in that role? So he comes back and says, what you need is a beefier AK. So we get an early iteration of this. Um, and what they did to make it 
basically handle that sustain fire a little bit better is they have a thicker profile barrel. So it's just thicker overall. Um, they go to a bulge trunnion, which again, we get into that barrel extension area. Oh, okay. Where if you look here, we have sure. this big bulge ribbed area. Hey, don't uh -huh. look me in the eyes when you say that shit, please. Oh, you love the bulge. Uh, don't say that either. Jeez. Calm it down. I'm going to call someone at uh, Rifle Dynamics, put in a fucking HR, complaint. dude. <laughs> call an HR, man. Hey, you didn't pay me to be here. I can say what I want. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on. Um, we get the bold strain. What that is just basically puts more meat in the barrel area. Again, Stop fucking I'm saying just, shit it's like what, this. It's what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you come it's, up with things other than bulge and it's, meat? It's thicker. It's beefier. God, it's everything. Damn, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it gets hotter, slower. I mean, it's just it goes. Yeah, uh, um, continue, continue. We we also get a thicker receiver. Thank you. Said with as much platonic capability out there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we go from a standard one millimeter stamped receiver to a 1.5. So that just makes it... I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I've endorsed yeah. it for years. Yeah. Yeah, we're metallurgists in our part time. <laughs> yeah. <a> spare time <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just, it's thicker walls. Helps it handle the heat better. Yeah. Um, and you get the club foot stock, which is basically the club prevalent. foot stock. Well, that's just, so that as you have it and you're in a support God. position, you can hold it a little just bit better. Something about like, we're going to nickname something the club foot. Yeah. It just seems like such an insult. Some birth defect to people with a club foot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is the 60s, man. No one cares. Just so not sensitive. <laughs> you shot the wasser. It's, it's not nice to you. No, it's yeah. not. Um, this being a little bit of a standout model, because this is a 74M, so we get a folding stock. It's a paratrooper model. You get all the fancy things. Badass. Your stock folds. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then badass. I'm talking about how the whole system has been beefed up yeah. to handle fire a little bit better. This example actually is then put on a diet a little bit. Um, they made a slightly thinner profile barrel just to make it a little bit lighter, uh, things like that, but it still handles... It's not a heavy fire. gun. No, by no means. Like it's not a, and it's a dream to shoot. Well, yeah, because I mean, again, it's it's heavier. Of course, it's longer, mm -hmm. beefier. Uh, you know, gun. Um, but Continue. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just trying to stay in the clear here. Um, but I mean, of course, it's a heavier gun. But I mean, it it is lovely to shoot. It's not overly heavy, but it's like, hey, look. I mean, it, it really is a pretty sweet gun to shoot. I like how long it is too. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like full length rifles. So yeah, of yeah. course. And I mean, if you got to kick down like a door, a... you could just reach out and poke them. Yeah, for me, it's like a standard AR. Yeah, right. Like, uh... Yeah, it's 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 cool. It's it's very very cool. So final thoughts: um, five AKs. Um, you know, obviously you're not an AK guy. Yeah. We don't expect to convert you in a day. We understand that. I, I think you did like the crank. I think you did like the crank. Oh, that though. crank is cool. That, yeah. Just such a small little PDW package, and then the five five six. Five five six. Is, yeah. I mean. It just makes sense for me. For and that's you, probably yeah. one of the first ARs I've seen in a long, or AKs I've seen in a long time that has features like an AR to where I'm like, hey, I can get on board with that. Manual arms will take a little bit of getting used sure. to, but same ammo, I can run surplus ammo. You yeah. said that like these guns get the piss shot out of them with no issues. Yeah. I'm like, I'd love a gun, yeah. like, you know, for the safe that's just like a zombie apocalypse gun in so, a 5.56. Five, so you being zero AKs, if you're gonna pick one AK to be your one AK there, what are you taking? I think, um, ooh, it's tough between the two 5.56s. Five, five, I think that 11 and a half inch 5.56. Five, five, There's only one 5.56. Five, five, yeah, the 11 and a half. The 14 five. Oh, I five, shot five. yours. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. So the the 5.56 five, five, that we shot earlier, because his is not on camera. My bad. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, eh, well, at this point, hey, if I'm taking anything, I'm taking a crank because I got a couple AKs, and that for me is like truly a bu bucket list gun for me. But if I say, hey, wipe the slate clean, I've got no AKs. I'm, I'm taking the 5.56 five, AK. Whatever oh. it is, 5.0, oh, what is it? No, no, it's a 6. 6.04. 6.04 six, six, oh, four. Six, oh, four. Six, oh, four would be my pick, especially with the modularity of stock, handguard. It's a yeah. length that I'm I'm very comfortable with. Like, that that would probably be my... All uh, our accessories we already have in a drawer. Yeah, All it's cool. your M-Lock stuff. Yeah. All your yeah. pick stuff. Throw and, it on there. And I mean, like, I, I completely get that. My personal go-to gun at home is a 5.56 five, AK. It's yeah. a full-length rifle. Yeah. 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 That one. Um, so, I mean, it, it's it's nice. It's a good appeal that you don't have to change over ammo. 5.56 five, is really soft shooting, yeah. very low recoil. It works. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out today yeah. and representing Rifle Dynamics. Hopefully, you can get fire being out here. 
um, you know, do any, you know, bring great, bring, bring great shame to rifle dynamics. Today. Hey, you know what? Hey, if they I fire me, the I'm keeping the guns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the opposite. I'm going to call your boss and tell him to give you a raise. So you did oh, great sweet. today. Thank you for coming out. Of course. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad to be it. here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Cool. And we will wrap it up here in just a sec. Dude, he told me, why am I forgetting? Yeah, she's my nurse. <laughs> yeah. For your skin cancer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she make mama it. go to work and then she oversaw them cut retire. shit out of me. That's how I met her. Yeah. It was just love at first cut or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Crispy with the zinger, dude. That's that decent. was good. That's hey, decent. no. Give him a clap yeah, with that. Decent. Crispy. Decent. I'll give you one clap. That was very, very good, Crispy. Yeah, not bad. Witty. Not bad, kid. Yeah. Not bad. It's the funniest thing you've said. Okay, everyone, to wrap up the episode today, as our videographer runs his freaking mouth, runs his stupid shit talking mouth to me. And you two, you two running <laughs> your shit talking mouth. It's the best joke he's had in the four years it's we've been working It's the first together. joke he's had that was decent. <laughs> I mean, he saved a banger, so I'll take it. We'll tell you that don't say banger <laughs> in reference to what was just being discussed. Um, <laughs> Thank you to Firearms Legal Protection. We're sorry for the intro to the ad read here. Um, we do appreciate their support. They um, supply insurance if you're in like a legally justified um, shooting or anything. Self-defense scenario. Yeah, whatever. I take this Rock. cactus and just just neck you to death with the cactus. Um, you know, I could do that. I could neck you to death. Do. Yeah. I mean, it's nonstop with this guy. Yeah. It's, you know, it's been an off day. So um, anyway, they have different plans. If you travel, you could do that. You do that. I stay at home most of the time, so I don't really get out of the house that much. Um, and our code 1911, so yeah. you about a third off each package. Yeah. Really good service. My favorite thing about them is when you call, you're not talking to a customer service rep. It's a lawyer. Attorney. Yep. That's who I need. Some shit just popped off. So anyway, yep. thanks to them. Um, and we'll see you guys next week.